Uh, terima kasih Surat Pengusi uh, Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian uh, Ya memang betul Walaupun aircon yang sejuk Memang isu panas Malam saya berada di sini juga Isu rumah terbengkalai uh, Sebelum saya nak Beraikan ni Saya nak cakap sikit rumah terbengkalai For those who were not here yesterday Sebenarnya Isu rumah terbengkalai ni Merupakan saya kira satu isu Yang ketidakadilan Yang nombor satu sekali lah The biggest injustice dan to the house buyers kerana mereka yang membina rumah ni kononnya telah mengumpul berbilion-bilion wang rakyat tapi rumah tidak disediakan uh, tapi tak seorang pun berada dalam penjara sekarang not even one of them has been in prison but they have pocketed billions of dollars but anyway uh, this is the greatest injustice lah done to Malaysia since we became independent nothing has been done So today, sekarang hari ini, uh, Alhamdulillah kita berada di sini, syukur uh, kerana uh, dapat uh, berkumpul di, pada hari ini Satu lagi isu, perbankan Islam, satu penindasan sebenarnya question mark lah Terus patut ada question mark, satu penindasan, we don't, we don't know whether it's penindasan uh, Benarkah, apakah penyelesaiannya? Uh, professor from Spain, our brother professor has already uh, elaborated on Dina and uh, his ideas to, to, to Dr. Mahathir uh, Isu hari ini kita merungkaikan perbezaan di antara perbankan Islam dan konvensional yang menjadi tren pentadbiran keuangan semasa uh, serta permasalahannya dan sejauh mana ianya menepati kehendak Islam I think the issue is because Uh, ramai orang yang mengambil keuangan Islam ataupun pembayaran uh, dengan Islamic Finance berasa mereka membayar kos yang lebih tinggi daripada kos conventional banking uh, because they feel that although riba uh, tak ada riba is uh, the, walaupun uh, the loan that they have taken is Islamic well, syariah compliance tapi at the end of the day they end up paying more more than riba. So this is a big question mark. So pada hari ini kita ada tiga orang pakar termasuk uh, our brother Dr Imran Hussein from Trinidad. So mengikut the uh, panel I mean uh, program baiklah kita mendengar terlebih dulu daripada uh, ahli, ahli panel yang pertama iaitu yang bahagia Datin Azian Omar, ketua unit perhubungan pelanggan CIMB Bank. Dan nah, silakan Datin untuk mulai. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh semua hadirat uh, terima kasih moderator kita Datuk uh, sebenarnya um, sebelum tu ingin saya perkenalkan diri saya terdahulu saya Datin Azia Umar adalah ketua bahagian customer resolusi ya cawang um, CIMB Bank ya CIMB Bank Berhad dan saya di sini adalah untuk uh, mendengar apa isu-isu daripada uh, consumer out there ya yeah. ya yeah, bagi uh, CIMB bank kita ada mengadakan satu unit khusus untuk menandatangani segala punya permasalahan permasalahan yang wujud ya yeah, untuk penyelesaian di mana itu adalah unit saya ya yeah, saya mengetuai unit berkenaan untuk menerima apa-apa isu-isu yang berkenaan perbankan Ya, khususnya CIMB Bank So um, channel untuk consumer datang untuk mengadu hal tentang perbankan khususnya khususnya perbankan uh, di pihak CIMB kami memang membuka channel-channel berkenaan uh, walk in melalui surat melalui social media ya, Facebook dan juga Twitter melalui um, internet ya, melalui web-web kami So, uh, semua kami punya informasi ada berada di dalam website kami berkenaan yeah. Itu saja, tak ada perkara panas, sensasi semua sejuk yang Datin uh, tetap berikan hari ini Nanti soalan mungkin kita boleh tanya dia Uh, Ali pandang kita kedua adalah bagi Dr. Azman Muhammad Noor Pensyarah Fakulti Fekah dan Usul Fekah Universiti Islam Antara Bangsa uh, Silakan Dr. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you very much 
Dato' Shannon, Shannon Imran, and Professor Omar, I too welcome you all to Malaysia again. And ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> hadirin dan hadirat sekalian, uh, pertamanya saya ucapkan terima kasih kepada penganjur Satuan uh, Pembunuhnya Muslim uh, kerana uh, menjemput saya untuk bersama-sama dengan tuan-tuan dan puan-puan untuk berkongsi pendapat <coughs> sebenarnya. Sebenarnya saya dapat apa ni panggil jemputan hari Khamis lepas saya saya pun tak tahu yang saya akan bersama dengan dengan Sheikh Ishani so it is a, an honor for me to be with Sheikh to share yeah, our opinions and thoughts um, <coughs> terus kepada tajuk yang dibincangkan adakah pen Islam uh, meninggas Bestemo jadi di sana memang soalan itu soalan ini biasa diutarakan di dan biasa di, disembang-sembangkan disebut oleh banyak customer bahawa uh, harga ataupun uh, pricing ataupun uh, nilai yang dikenakan untuk pembiayaan kos adalah lebih besar berbanding dengan apa ni commercial bank. Jadi kita kena faham uh, untuk membincangkan perkara ini kita kena faham kerana uh, bank Islam ada adalah agak berbeza daripada bank konvensional. Kerana dalam uh, bank Islam mereka meng, cuba mengelakkan daripada mengguna interest jadi dalam uh, sistem riba, bank riba, senang saja sebab semua produk adalah berseteraskan kepada interest, interest bearing loan. Jadi uh, bank hanyalah pemberi hutang. Bank ambil duit daripada depositors dan dan bank memberi hutang dengan interest. Bank bayar balik dengan interest kepada depositors dan dan bank bank uh, membuat duit macam mana dengan menggunakan interest kepada pembiayaan ataupun kepada hutang yang diberikan kepada customers. Customer lambat bayar pun tak apa. Uh, the more you delay the payment, the more the bank can charge you interest. Uh, but the difference uh, for the Islamic banks, for the murabah product especially, uh, the price is fixed. Harga sudah tetap dan harga tak boleh berubah. Jadi kita kena faham bahawa uh, ini di antara faktor kenapa uh, pricing itu mereka mereka meletakkan harga yang agak mahal kerana untuk jangka masa 10 tahun, 20 tahun pembiayaan, banyak ke ke barang kalian yang boleh berlaku Uh, untuk uh, antaranya ialah untuk matching antara aset dan liabilities kemudian juga apa ni mengambil kira apa ni risiko-risiko yang akan uh, dilebih oleh bank jadi kita kena ingat bahawa harga adalah satu tak boleh berubah-ubah uh, kalau harga berubah-ubah dia menjadi apa ni menjadi uh, apa ni menjadi waran dan dia boleh menyebabkan akad itu tidak tidak sah tidak sah he was born in the caribbean island of trinidad um he is a graduate of the Alimia Institute in Karachi. Uh, he has worked for several years as a foreign service officer in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the government of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, but gave up his job later to devote his life to the mission of Islam. He lived in New York for 10 years, during which time he served as director of Islamic studies for the Joint Mu Committee of Muslim Organization of Greater New York. He lectured on Islam in several American and Canadian universities, colleges, churches, including prisons and uh, community halls. He was imam for some time at Masjid Dar Darul Quran in Long Island, New York. He has also led weekly prayers and delivered sermon at the United Nations headquarters in New York. Um, he has traveled continuously and extensively throughout the world on Islamic lecture tours. Um, and has also written more than a dozen books on Islam. Uh, Dr. Imran Hussein, thank you very much. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Brother, moderator, fellow panelists, uh, my distinguished and learned brother, Dr. Omar Ibrahim, Vadilio brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was a doctoral student at the Graduate Institute of International Studies in Geneva. I didn't know how much Zionism there was in that institute. And I finally left without defending a thesis that I knew I could never defend in the Zionist Institute. So thank you for conferring the doctorate on me, but I don't have a PhD. <laughs> Islam, the religion, which came from the Quran and from Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu I'm talking about that Islam. 
a zero tolerance for oppression. And the oppressor will begin to receive his reward for his oppression in the grave. Perhaps later on I can give you some description of what kind of punishment can re he can receive in the grave. The world today is one which is witnessing universal oppression, multidimensional oppression. And if one cannot recognize that, then buy a one-way ticket to the moon. The oppressor created, it didn't happen by accident, a banking system which I perceive to be the centerpiece of his overall system of oppression is not the cruise missiles, it's the banking system. That oppressor is identified in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 51. We can speak about that later. It is a Zionist alliance of Zionist Jews and Zionist Christians, a mysterious European alliance which is about to deliver to Israel after a long struggle the status of ruling state in the world. The Zionists want history to end with the Pax Judaica which would replace the Pax Americana in which we now live, which itself replaced the Pax Britannica, which preceded it. I wrote this book 10 years ago, Jerusalem in the Quran, to explain that end of history. When Israel rules the world tomorrow, then a man would rule the world from Jerusalem. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam described that man to us. But this subject belongs to ilmu akhiru zaman or Islamic eschatology. A subject which Islamic scholars I don't understand why are shunning. That man is of course Dajjal, the false messiah. The US dollar is about to collapse. Even a schoolboy knows that. I don't know why the bankers don't know that. If they do, why aren't they talking about it? And why aren't they explaining to us why the US dollar is about to collapse? And how is it that Imran Hussein 15 years ago was saying that the US dollar not only is it going to collapse but it must collapse. Is he a prophet? Does he have an angel talking to him? Excuse me for my frustration. But like my brother Omar, we have been voices crying in the wilderness for a long, long time now. Why must the US dollar collapse? And we said that when it collapses, it will bring down the US economy and that will facilitate the transfer of power to Israel. And we said that the present monetary system will then have to be replaced with a new monetary system. This is monetary economics. They don't teach it in the Darul Ulum. And yet we get fatwa on money by people who have never studied modern monetary economics. This knowledge came from the study of the Quran and the study of the Ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the context of Ilmu Akhiru Zaman. If the modern monetary system which came out of Bretton Woods and which has come out of the international monetary system and the monetary fund, sorry, and the articles of agreement of that fund, which incidentally, and even Dr. Mahathir did not know it, 
prohibits what Allah made halal. Allah gave us the gold dinar and the silver dirham which are in the Quran. But we live in an age today where some people have a less than a passing acquaintance with the Quran. The dinar is in the Quran. Did you know that? And the dirham is in the Quran. Did you know that? And the International Monetary Fund, the Articles of Agreement, prohibit the use of gold as money. Ask them why, they'll never tell you why. And yet we remain like people eating roti chanai and going to sleep. <laughs> and claiming to have scholarship. The money which is coming, I said 15 years ago is going to come, it's already here. When the US dollar collapses, it's going to bring down the whole world of paper money with it. And this bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper money, which of course we can defend anytime anyone wants to challenge us or not, is going to be replaced with electronic money, which will be more haram and more dangerous. I thought it's coming in the future, it's already here. But then imagine my surprise based on my study of Islamic eschatology. Two years ago I realized that the same people who have given us paper money in order to rip us off and to reduce Indonesia to abject poverty so our daughters will now be maids all over the world, our daughters, and be paid the salary of dogs and cats, our daughters. The same people who are now giving us electronic money in order to have a system where you have espionage to track down every single transaction and to be able to close an account whenever they want to, whenever it's convenient. The same people are going to bring back gold and silver tomorrow as money. I was surprised when I discovered that. That we're moving towards a tomorrow, maybe 20 years from now, when Israel is going to mint gold and silver. Oh, is going to mint gold and silver? My gosh, Imran, you are behind time. Israel is already minting gold and silver coins. Go to Singapore, you see them on display. I don't want to live to see that day. When those who are today waging war on Islam on Israel's behalf are going to bring back gold and silver as money. While we remain ominously silent on the subject, apart from Omar and myself and a few others who have been crying in the wilderness for the last 15 years. So I pray to Allah to take me away from the world before that day comes. Because the shame and the disgrace will be too much for me. Let them live who today will not raise a little, a little finger. Not even a little finger will they raise and declare themselves Islamic banking. But they'll never say that this paper money is bogus, it's fraudulent, it's, it's haram. And they will never say, let us bring back the gold and silver coins. May Allah keep them alive for that day. So that they may face the shame and the disgrace of a people who have betrayed Allah and his messenger. What is riba and how does it oppress are questions we could take up later. There are two forms of riba. One is of course lending money on interest. And when money le is lent on interest, the rich will remain permanently rich forever and ever. And the poor will be imprisoned in permanent poverty forever and ever. Money will no longer circulate through the economy. And even a schoolboy can see that's today's economy. But there is another form of riba which can be identified in taking a piece of paper. And if you have not studied the Bretton Woods Accord and you have not studied the International Monetary Fund and the history of monetary economics, please remain silent. You take a piece of paper and you print a picture on it 
and you put a number on it and you give to that picture because you are God a fictitious value You've, because you are God himself you create money out of nothing well wait until you reach the grave just wait until you reach the grave that's a form of riba or you create something called a bank take the word Islam out of it because that's hijacking the name of Islam and somebody has an account with one thousand dollars and he writes checks he goes all around KL writing checks because they know him the, the shopkeepers accept the checks but you have one thousand in your account and you write out checks for twenty thousand you should go to jail that's fraudulent schoolboy will understand that is this fractional reserve banking can this be halal if that is halal, you should buy a one-way ticket to the moon. <laughs> and so, it is not Islam when you lend money on interest. And it is not Islam when you say goodbye to money with intrinsic value that Allah created. And you create money out of nothing. That can't be Islam. But as Omar was mentioning earlier, there's also something called riba through the back door. And let us speak briefly on that before we end. Can I buy on credit? Of course I can buy on credit. Nabi Muhammad bought on credit. Can the shopkeeper raise his price? Because he's selling to me on credit? The cash price is five ringgits. I don't have the five ringgits. So the shopkeeper gives me time to pay. But because he's waiting for his money, the cash price now has to be changed to a credit price. So the credit price will now be ten ringgits because he has to wait for his money. Can a credit price be higher than a cash price. You don't need a degree from some Sharia Institute. I mean this is simple. This is five ringgits worth of common sense. That if you have to wait for your money that the money should increase over time. That's riba. That is the essence of riba. That money grows over time. And so when the bank says, and they call it Murabaha, they should define it, put in brackets after Murabaha, backdoor riba. <laughs> And these are our Muslim brothers and sisters and we should warn them about the punishment. I hope somebody asks me about that question. <laughs> what can be the punishment in the grave for this bogus betrayal of Islam? If credit price is higher than cash price, the difference between the two would be because of time. That money can increase over time, that's riba. And so Islamic banks should take the word Islam out of it. So long as they are practicing these bogus transactions. What is the solution? Allah gave it in the Quran. In the very last revelation. He says, riba." The alternative to riba is business. <coughs> business. A business transaction is one which embraces risk. You can make a profit or you can suffer a loss. Once there is that risk in the transaction, it's not riba. And number two, don't wait until the enemy who is now waging war on Islam and who gave us this monetary system that we're now using. Don't wait until they return to dinar and dirham, to gold and silver because the embarrassment will be too great. Let us return to the dinar and dirham now. It's not sufficient to mint it. 
No. More than that. When you see something which is munkar, you got to respond to it. And the response must be to change it. For And minting the dinar and dirham to work alongside the munkar and say, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, is not the solution. We have to be more aggressive than that. Ours is the alternative. Yours must go. How do we do that? My suggestion has been, let us build a market in which we'll prohibit the bogus money. Let us build a market in which we'll return to the gold and silver dirham. And Allah does not sleep. And if we're doing the work that is pleasing to Allah, then Allah is the one who charts the cost of victory. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much. Brother Imran Hussain for the most enlightening uh, such uh, eye-opening uh, remarks on Sunday uh, banking. Now I open the, I mean, book up kepada uh, para hadirin lah untuk bertanya soalan, untuk bagi komen dan sebagainya and direct to your uh, our panelists. Please identify yourself as usual. Uh, anyone? First one, yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Hazlinda. I'm actually a reporter but I'm also a victim of uh, Islamic banking. If you ask me satu penindasan, we don't need that question mark. It's not because of riba, but because of miscalculation by bankers. I lost the house. I'm not ashamed of that, to say that I didn't want to pay because the calculation was wrong. I went to NCF and they calculated that it was 50% more than it should be. NCF is also part of Bank Negara, but unfortunately Bank Negara just mediated the whole thing. PPIM was there. We were there with Maybank. I'm not ashamed to mention them as well. Maybank, Prakash Mukherjee, whoever, you name them, they were there. They have been told about this problem for eight years. What did they do? They did not even recalculate. They were told that there was an extra of 150,000 to 250,000 on the loan given. We took a 375,000 ringgit loan to buy a house and they charged us 793,000 to pay back within 19 years. I wouldn't mind paying if the calculation was right. It was based on two years of 6% and another um, 17 years of 8.25%. We challenged them to calculate. They failed to. What I'm trying to say here is, can CIMB or the university create an entity for people to go to to ask if the calculation is right? We need a roof above our heads. We need a roof to actually sell off to send our children to further their education. Is that wrong? Now, when we brought this up, what the banks did was they have a lawyer to take the matter to court. I'm sorry I have to share this in English so that Tuan Imran and probably the others who are more conversant about this matter would be able to respond. And I'm sure that in Azia, you can also feel the whole matter. Now, when we went to UIA to consult another lecturer by the name of Professor Zakaria Man, he gave me the majala. I went through the trouble to read about Bibita bin Ajir. It was too difficult for me to mention that term when I first took the loan. BBA was easier. But it was nonsensical. I should have spelled it some other way and put an I at the end. So when matters were brought to court, because we didn't want to pay and we wrote them thousands of letters to tell them it's wrong. Even the current CEO failed to look at it. Don't want to mention his name because I thought he's someone very respected. However, when it was miscalculated and we got NCF to tell our lawyers that we ought to fight this case, we were told that the current judge listening to such cases was from Bangalore, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Rohana. We had even brought that matter to her when she was still in Bangalore. What's the point if we keep circling in the same circle? I would like to know, Tuan Imran, what is the punishment for these people? And I would be very happy <laughs> to lose the house today, but actually feel satisfied with the penance that they will face for their sins. They owe me a lot. They owe Islam a lot. They owe other people a lot. This is not the only case. We're not talking about extra payment. We're talking about wrong calculation. 
When I went to Bank Negara and I pretended to be an ordinary person at the counter, I told the staff, please calculate for me. She did. And it was excessive. But I can't win a case in court. Why? Because we have people from Bank Negara. <laughs> for your information, the officer who I had risk, uh, you know, complained the matter to was an ex Maybank staff. What do you expect? There is hidden loyalty all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that is very wrong. You should not be loyal to something that is wrong, something that is evil, something that is Zionist in many ways. I have also taken some photographs this morning before coming here because I was very angry about what was happening. I've given to PPIM photographs of the house of credit manager who actually handles repossessed cars. Look at the number of cars he has. He's got a 60 car. He's got a Range Rover and they are all with WV number plates. <laughs> he has just retired. I am still working and I can't afford that. All right. So all this is because you have officers who do not know where the line stands. They buy cars for their friends and sell it off. He's got four cars. Look at the number plates. They are not ordinary cars. And he says to my sister who lives next door that these are cars given to him for being director on a company. That's bullshit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't come to give such cars. I would love to be a director for that company. I'm sure even if I work for that company, I'll get a better car than what I'm driving today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Asia. Thank you, um, criticism system, there seems to be a conspiracy uh, along the way. Uh, may I ask uh, either Uma or Imran, uh, Imran to... Yeah. Number one. Punishment for them. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, the bank sold to you on credit at a price higher than the cash price. That's riba through the back door. The miscalcul miscalculation is of course something that is to be uh, corrected and if it's not corrected that's a grave injustice okay in surah to zumar of the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and he says ma'adawuz billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim allah yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha allah takes the souls at the time of maut Mouth is dead. وَالَّتِي لَمْ تَمُتْ فِي مَنَامِهَا And those whose souls are not taken while they are awake, Allah takes their souls when they are asleep. فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتِ When He takes your souls while you are asleep, He keeps those souls for whom mouth is written. وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ And the rest, he sends them back for a determined period of time. There is an ominous message in this verse of Surah Tul. Which Surah? Huh? Right, don't be afraid to say it. For those who are engaged in oppression, and remember that Allah has zero tolerance for oppression. And riba is oppression. And banking today is oppression. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam cursed all four. And said that they were all equally guilty. The one who takes riba. The one who gives riba. The one who records the transactions. Therefore working in the banks. And the two witnesses, and he said they are all equally guilty. If you die with the curse of the Prophet upon you, wait for the grave. Now, Allah can take your soul. And when he takes your soul, there will be no medical evidence, no scientific evidence that you are still alive. None. So they will think that you are dead. You died in your sleep, for example. And they will give your body the ghusl. And then they will perform the salatul janaza. And your loved ones are the ones who are going to put your body in the grave. Not knowing 
that you're not dead. And I've, I believe lots of people are dying this way now. I believe that. And when you have been buried, there is no light down there. None. When the last person has reached 40 steps away, then Allah can return the soul, as he did it last night for all of you who are here. So you will wake up from your sleep. But when you wake up from your sleep, you, live, you find no light in the room. So you'll call out to your wife, but you get no answer. You attempt to get up, you can't get up, there's no space to get up. So you begin to panic. You begin to feel. You say, but I didn't go to sleep in this clothing, I went to sleep in my sarong. What clothing is this? And then you're going to smell the, the camphor with which they bathe, bathe the dead body. And then slowly, slowly, slowly you will realize that you've been buried alive. And they forgot to put a cell phone <laughs> when they buried you. <laughs> And then you're going to cry out, and cry out, and cry out. But there's no one to hear you. And you will urinate upon yourself, and you will defecate in yourself. And the insects are going to crawl over you, and you can't do anything about it. You can't call for your banker, you can't call for your chauffeur, you can't call for your Indonesian maid. She's always an Indonesian, incidentally. You can't call for any help. And Allah is now going to punish you with a punishment you richly deserve. Because you had a less than a passing acquaintance with the Quran. You had eyes you could not see. You had ears you could not hear. You had hearts you could not understand. It doesn't matter whether you are Christian or Jew or Hindu or Buddhist or Confucian or anything. The same God who created you is the same God who sent the Quran and sent Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. This is the punishment. Okay, I have two uh, parts to my question. The first part since the bankers are here. My name is Lee. Eh? Okay, this part is since the bankers are here. And uh, yesterday I attended the housing part of it. Eh? And I uh, understand some of the victims of the housing is when they pay the 10% deficit, then thereafter the bank continue to ask them to pay progressive, even up to 100%, but the house is only maybe 20% finished. So there is a fraudulent going on between the engineers, architects, with the bank, but the bank release the payment, they don't care, they victimize the owner, they have to pay the full. So are the banks overcoming this problem of uh, no charging, I mean, uh, getting their own people uh, and fall, and fall, or no? They have to go after the, the, the architects and developers instead of the victim. Did you ask this uh, question yesterday? No. Uh, they, they somebody asked, but there was no answer. No. All right. <laughs> so the second part is uh, on my own case. I uh, purchased some through a merchant through credit cards. Okay, some some products, investment products. But the, I find that it is uh, fraudulent in the sense that what I pay to the to the merchant is they put, put under different company's name. And within 24 hours, I asked the card, credit, uh, bank to cancel all my transactions. But the, all the, the customer services refused. And once you sign, you have to pay and you have to face the bank. You know? So, but I understand that within, there's a grace period within 40 days or, you know, between the, the, the merchant, I mean the bank and the MasterCard, uh, the, the owner, either Visa or MasterCard, uh, the credit card owners. So why is it the bank refusing to entertain uh, victims? Instead, no, they just charge you and you don't pay, you go to court. So, uh, I have some documents to put on my, my facts. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lee, <coughs> the uh, first question I uh, 
cannot answer your first question in regards of who the bank will go after because at resolution, at CIMB resolution, what we will do is we will sit with you case by case basis and we will review your case. Because at CIMB customer resolution, we don't treat cases as universal or general. We treat them case by case basis. We will look in the terms of uh, you as a consumer, yeah, you as the Malaysian, right, Malaysia or foreigners, yeah, and also what uh, you have been contracted, what you have been promised. We will look through all angles at customer resolution of CIMB. Okay, on your part on the uh, credit card, is it CIMB credit card? May I know, Mr. Lee? Yeah, one of one of one of it is CIMB. Yeah, I will just focus on the CIMB issues at this moment because uh, okay, I would like to welcome you to my customer resolution uh, unit. Uh, just we can sit and we will review your issue. All right, okay. We uh, work together and we will look at uh, your case case by case basis and we will review that. Okay, Mister Lee. Why don't you go to Manara Bumi Putra Commerce Level 5? We open during working hours, even uh, lunch hour. Thank yeah? you very much. Any other questions? Yes, please. Uh, may I make speak? Yeah, please, please. Yes, please. Please, sir. Yeah. A contractor is building a complex, housing complex, and he's not completed it as yet. In fact, may not even started it, but already he's selling the flats. It's an invalid transaction in Islam. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised that the scholars of Islam cannot recognize Islam it. Islam very extensively in Malaysia. <laughs> you cannot sell, you cannot sell that which you do not own. A futures contract is not permissible. It's haram. Uh, my name is Anwar. I'd just like to ask in terms of Islamic banking and Islamic financing. We all know that riba is haram, period. Those who participate in the haram activities are considered haram. There is no two way around it. I believe we have got, I don't know, maybe 70-80% of those who are involved in the financing and banking of Islamic in Malaysia are also Muslims. Number one question, why are they still working there? Number two question, okay, I thought that all of us Muslims understand we base Islam on Al-Quran and Sunnah. It has not changed but from uh, Rasulullah's time. Okay, I assume that all the Muslims in the banking sector understand and read the Al-Quran and the Sunnah. I also assume those in the government also understand what's in the Al-Quran and the Sunnah. Okay. We have seen a lot of uh, Muslims okay, uh, being put down by this financing system. The so-called say the difference between conventional banking and Islamic banking. I see, we all see, conventional banking you earn 10 ringgit. Islamic banking you earn 12 ringgit and you call it Islamic banking. What is this? Okay, I would like to ask the panel, especially from the banks, are we not Muslim who have got self-conscious? Do we not work for halal living? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any question? Maybe uh, you ask first, then the panel will answer. Saya kembali dari Rawang. Masalah saya bank Muhammad. Tapi macam ganti cakap dia bank dia, dia bank dia. Tapi bank Islam. Kalau bolehnya bank Islam semua sama. Eh, maknanya mesti sama dia punya aturan ok macam saya cakap tetap dia riba ok saya bank saya rumah saya RM54,000 saya dah bayar RM46,000 masalah saya mungkin ada masalah lah saya ada kelewatan membayar eh, saya dah 36 bulan lebih mahal tak bayar sepatut lama dah dia lelok rumah tu ok baru ni saya ada duit sikit adalah saya dapat saya kemenangan dapat insurans saya bayar juga RM10,000 hutang saya RM18,000 Maknanya ada duit pada dalam RM6,000 lagi Dalam masa terdekat ni Yang saya dah bayar RM10,000 Saya dah buat suat lah perjanjian Nak kena bayar RM1,100 uh, Lebih kurang dalam 18 bulan Tapi letter offer pada saya 
1100 selama 5 tahun tapi pembayaran rumah saya sampai 2021 mana ada daripada saya kan maknanya sekarang uh, bila tanda akad ceritanya saya dah bayar 46000 hutang saya ada lagi 68000 selama 5 tahun saya buat air dry wine surat menyatakan uh, boleh rombak balik macam mana kan riba tetap riba dan macam mana solution kita nak buat riba tetap riba ni mereka saya dah bayar 46000 saya ingat berapa ribu lagi dia nak habis 50000 tu tapi ni masalahnya dia kata 15000 lah nak pindah dia dah kata surat-surat dia tu kalau saya tak bayar lagi yang 6000 tu tapi saya dah buat surat raiwan menyatakan suruh sambung sampai 2021 kalau 1100 maknanya lebih kurang dalam 550 tetapi tetap juga saya nak bayar lagi 68 cakap kau pernah 100000 dalam rumah murah dia tawar terima kasih Regarding the um, recovery of the bank room, yeah, that one they are going to think in their case basis on the charm, um, bank of Amalad, the exit procedure, the bank of Amalad, they are not going to comment on the bank of Amalad. Yeah, that's what happens. Dr. Azman, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Persoalan yang pertama tadi, berkenaan dengan BBA tadi kan? Uh, saya berpengalaman uh, belajar ataupun bersama dengan Pak Musa Sawan orang yang orang awal-awal daripada Kami Islam dulu jadi apabila mereka kata mereka collect deposit pada waktu dahulu tak ada, tak, tak banyak produk uh, deposit banyak tapi tak ada produk untuk apa ni produk pembiayaan untuk buat duit lah bisnes uh, jadi pada waktu waktu itu jadi mereka came up dengan BBA lah jadi saya tak, tak nafikan mana usaha yang sudah dilakukan oleh mereka-mereka yang terdahulu adalah usaha yang baik cuma kena improve lah memang tak dapat nafikan kadang-kadang kita tak dapat identify uh, siapakah contracting parties developer uh, customer beli dengan developer ke customer beli dengan bank kalau sepatutnya customer beli dengan bank kalau rumah tu tak siap bank yang bertanggungjawab kena kejar developer dan uh, apa ni uh, dalam masalah ini kita pun ada apa ni kaedah dalam dalam kita kita fikah pun dalam hukum amanah kita boleh cancel boleh call lah jadi customer boleh batal jual beli sebab saya beli barang kamu tak boleh hantar sebab kenapa aku kena bayar harga ke barang kamu tak hantar ha, jadi uh, tak boleh delivery atau failure to deliver maknanya we can cancel the contract sepatutnya inilah di antara uh, bahagian ataupun aspek-aspek yang boleh kita improve boleh kita kaji jadi apabila berlaku masalah yang berlaku tu ia memberi imej yang buruk kepada perbankan Islam lah sepatutnya tak berlaku kalau kita tengok dalam uh, bola sepak pun uh, berapa lama dikaji di, to set the rules of the game jadi sama juga dengan perbankan yang konvensional ini dah berapa tahun jadi perbankan Islam dalam 30 tahun lepas baru kita mulakan jadi saya tak nafikan memang ada kadang-kadang berapa-berapa kelemahan tapi pada masa tu untuk memulakan to start with, jadi mereka bertanya dengan Syekh Yusuf Fardawi dan ulama-ulama semasa, mereka kata banyak benda ha, sekadar pada waktu itu kerana susah kesukaran untuk me, uh, mengoperasikan perbankan Islam, jadi mereka benarkan cuma persoalan-persoalan yang berlaku sebagaimana yang abang tanya tadi, jadi saya rasa perlu ini hak abang, jadi kita, kita kena buat sebagai mendatang jawab tadi, case by case mungkin kadang-kadang berlaku kesilapan dan sekarang ni orang buat komuniti merubah pun kadang-kadang berlaku kesilapan, yang bahagian operation lain yang nak conclude kontrak tu lain yang approve apa ni application untuk dapat financing tu lain uh, jadi yang nak buat teletrade nak telefon nak jual beli barang sekarang ni mereka guna community merubah atau pedawar tu jadi uh, kadang-kadang berlaku kita manusia dan kita kena ingat hak kita sebagai customer apa ni uh, kita kena mempertahankan hak kita perjuangkan hak kita kembali kepada persoalan uh, tadi persoalan sama ada merubah dibolehkan ataupun tidak kalau sebenarnya ia adalah tulang belakang kalau tak ada kalau kita stop merubah memang tutup lah tutup itu lah bank Bank Islam <laughs> Kalau kita kata murabah tak boleh Of course ha? Tutup pintu Sebab tidak ada lagi cara Sebab tak ada cara lain Tak dapat Nak dapat dapat keuntungan Nak berniaga Sebab bank kita kena faham Bank Islam bukanlah Apa ni Persatuan kebatikan Pelabur-pelabur juga Mengharapkan pulangan Jadi mereka Mesti nak melakukan Perniagaan yang halal Dan Untuk memastikan Apa ni Pelaburan yang halal Dan pulangan yang halal Kita kena pastikan Ia betul-betul patuh syariah Ikut syariah jadi kalau lah kita katakan murabah uh, tadi tak boleh di, diharamkan maknanya bank akan tutup kedai tak, tak ada lagi cara lain setakat ni maknanya tulang belakang bagi bank untuk mengelakkan daripada sistem riba sebab sistem riba memang yang konvensional itu memang kat mana-mana senang sebab dia memang cah itu memang secure memang selamat tapi dalam murabah ini bank kena tanggung risiko 
Itulah yang kita kena improvekan Sebab dahulu Peringkat awal dulu mungkin lain Sekarang ni kita sebanyak orang dah faham Orang mengkaji Sepatut sebagaimana yang Tuan Syed sebut tadi pun Bank kena tanggung risiko sebelum berlaku jual beli tadi Dan kita tengok dalam uh, hadis-hadis Rasulullah SAW juga banyak Bagaimana berlaku jualan tangguh Dan uh, kalau baca kita Alam Mokin di Alam Mokin di Bila Qayyim pun dia kata Kalau aku tak mampu beli rumah ni Dia suruh kawan dia beli dulu Dia kata kemudian aku beli dengan kamu Dengan harga yang lebih itu itu juga di antara penyelesaian sebab kita hajat keperluan sekarang ni tak dapat nafikan kalau kita tutup tak ada guna maknanya tak ke mana-mana sebab ke mana-mana pun keperluan sekarang ni tak boleh tidak ha, maknanya secara umum memang bank itu diperlukan cuma kita nak menyelesaikan masalah riba tadi nak keluar daripada riba macam mana dan kelemahan-kelemahan yang ada tu sepatut kita tambah lagi kita kena apa ni kena tambah baik lagi dan kita kena improve lagi supaya apa ni ia tak jauh daripada uh, makosik ataupun matlamat sebenar syariah wallah Terima kasih doktor Minta maaf eh Cerita musuh lah eh Rumah saya kena lelong Berapa dah nak lelong rumah saya Memang bank dah ambil hak dia je Saya dah bayar kot RM6,000 Tapi akad kita RM100,000 Dia akan bayar Mungkin RM68,000 Maknanya mungkin saya Kalau boleh katalah lelong Bersih Tak ada hutang lah Ini kita tahu hutang ke lagi Macam kereta ke apa eh ada lagi blacklist itulah rakyat Malaysia masih dia, dia ini pun kalau tanya saya sebab saya dari segi ah dari segi saya pun bukan wakil mana-mana bank ni <laughs> memanglah kalau tanya saya hak nak melelong tu sendiri pun pemegang gadaian tadi dia caci tadi tak boleh dia nak lelong sesuka hati dia saya nak tanya dia sebenarnya yang dia, dia kena dapat kebenaran tuan rumah dahulu sebab rumah itu walaupun dia uh, dicaga tapi dia adalah owner tuan yeah. yang beli rumah tadi okay. adalah owner how can we justify haram tetap haram Okay, are we trying to justify? Kalau dikatakan dalam al sunnah dengan al quran, riba is haram. Period. Okay, we are saying to ourselves, alright, just because we want a bank to flourish, to make money, we condone with it, we justify, we cannot. Haram tetap haram. Saya saya tuju haram adalah tetap haram. Kalau ayam kena langgar, kena kata halak haram. Haram, 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 haram. Ya, lepas tu sekarang dengan ayam yang orang yang kata dia sembelih, kita kata betul kalau kamu sembelih. Kita petikai kan lagi yang pengen sedang buat ni kita kata tak tahu ke halal haram kita makan yang haram, boleh ke tak? Kita terus pergi ke komision bank, boleh ke tak? Kita tahu dah confirm dah haram. Sekarang ni what is the gateway? What is the solution? Kita kata haram bank kata-kata kita kata bank Islam kita petikai kepada produk bank Islam. Okey, lepas tu kita pergi ke komision. Adakah itu penyelesaian? Kita tak perlu bank. Kita tak perlu bank. Ah ha, boleh kalau tak perlu bank apa lah. Sekarang ni siapa dia boleh hidup tanpa bank? Ah ha, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Dulu boleh tak ada bank. Dulu boleh tak ada bank. Ah kejap je. Kalau boleh kalau boleh saya setuju. Dan saya dalam masa hari ni saya kena ingat minta 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 maaf ya. isu berasingan. Okey saya nak share sikit satu pengalaman eh. Saya okay. seorang peniaga. Saya buka, saya buka satu kilang. <laughs> saya buka satu kilang baru ni. Saya usaha supaya saya tidak terlibat dengan riba. Caranya saya kumpul duit Dah 10 tahun saya kumpul duit saya dapat RM250,000 je Dan kos hilang ni untuk jadikan standard JMP semua lebih kurang RM800,000 Jadi sekarang saya stop Jadi untuk orang-orang yang angkat tangan tadi Bagaimana nak selesaikan masalah saya ni? Saya, saya tak nak buka kedai kecil saja <laughs> Macam jual jubah, jual tudung gitu saya tak nak Kita menega Kita menega Ya, saya dah menega daripada kecil Dan sekarang dah peluang untuk saya buka sebuah kilang Saya dah ada market daripada luar negara So, saya nak tahu Dalam banyak-banyak cara yang ada sekarang ni Apa solusinya untuk untuk saya ni Masalah yang saya hadapi sekarang ni Jadi, saya belum lagi apply untuk loan daripada bank ni Saya datang ke sini hari ni Saya lihat ramai orang kita benda tu tak boleh, tak boleh, tak boleh tapi tak ada yang kata solution, apa yang boleh <laughs> ada tak solution? siapa ada solution nanti ah uh, yes please madam morning, morning morning a very special thanks to PPIM for organizing this forum and to bring us together ok, until today as we, you see the voices here represents we are asking so many questions. Let me put one question first. All right, if bank is uh, on the customer's side, we don't want injustices, we want justice for everyone. Why is the bank giving the bank terminals to all these fraudsters continuously to cheat the public? We are not able to answer this question, but we want the bank, Bank Negara, 
conventional bank or relevant banks to answer this question. Why is the bank, bank terminal been given to all kind of rosters? Number two, what are the actions taken by these banks to overcome or to diminish or to lessen these problems which is the burden to the public, to the bank users. We don't want a bank today. You just heard a few moments ago. We do not want a bank. It's just because our families are burdened, our people are burdened, and I wish this also goes to the Prime Minister's department and all people who are responsible for what we are here today, this Saturday morning, early morning. Actually, it is not easy for us to be here. The second question I have to bring forward is, are there any special third party debt collectors assigned by your banks to harass all these victims continuously till we don't have a peaceful life? I think here the public here can tell you how many of us are harassed by the bank debt collectors daily, by bank lawyers, by the different, thank you, by all these different um, threats that we receive daily in our lives. Are we Malaysians moving towards a progressive country or are we going backward? And the third thing I need to ask is, what is the solution given by this bank? We want an immediate solution given by all these banks and especially Bank Negara that what action will be taken against these fraudsters and how can we recover back our money? With this, I wish to thank all those who are participating, all those like Prof. Im, uh, Imran and uh, our Professor what, uh, Omar and uh, all these people who have been uh, really giving a listening ear to the public. I think we will move towards a better country. I really hope the Prime Minister is here today so I can voice out. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I can assure you PPIN will get better with Benigala. But PPIN will bring your point, your grievances to Benigala's attention uh, almost in the uh, next few days. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. I think uh, because she's not from Benigala. So, everyone, uh, other thing. Yes, any other question? We have another 20 minutes or 15 minutes. I just have a short uh, question to ask. I'm so sorry because I'm just in the yeah. middle of this event, so sorry. Uh, okay, um, I just want to ask about the interest interest rate of Islamic. Um, so about say, what I said, Prasad. There's no interest in Islam. Yeah, there is. Uh, <laughs> they call it as a profit. But it's still an interest, right? It's just a number that you want to pay. Okay? So that is one thing that you make us confused. Okay? So the second part is I want to ask if, let's say, you're doing something like Islamic, so I can make it, let's say, compare between the conventional rates and also the Islamic rate. The Islamic rate is, is a little bit, I don't know whether that is a, a little bit higher or it's, it's actually is higher rate compared than the conventional rate. Okay? But to me, my point is here, um, due to this interest rate is high, but it's Islamic, by right as Islamic, the interest rate should not be higher than the conventional because if it's higher than conventional, it's like a burden to us. Because we do it as Islam, we should help each other, right? So that is my point, lah. But uh, if you can answer it, my question. Thank you very much. <laughs> the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "Whether riba is big or it is small, it is still riba." Number one, and he says, "Whether riba is big." 20%, 30%, or small, 2%, 1%, you know, Graham. What's the name of that bank in Bangladesh? Nobel Prize? Grameen, yeah, Grameen. Grameen, and they get a Nobel Prize for that. Whether riba is big or small, the result is still the same. It just takes more time. It ends up in destitution and poverty. So it doesn't matter whether it is bigger or smaller. It is still haram. 
why does the money lender lend you an interest either through the front door conventional or through the back door so-called Islamic why sometimes he does that in order to get your pound of flesh you know about the British Sheikh don't you who wrote that excellent book on riba never heard about him Shakespeare. that's right what's the name of the book Merchant of Venice, the best book on riba you can find. Shakespeare. Sometimes he lends you on interest for your pound of flesh. Huh? So that his gain would be your loss. Wa'aklihim amwal al nasi bil batil, says the Quran. But sometimes he lends you an interest for a more sinister objective. And for that you must read John Perkins. Take a note. Confessions of an economic hitman. He lends you an interest because he wants to enslave you. And so you no longer have freedom. You cannot do what you want to do because the slave master says, no, you're going to pay a price. You can't pay that price. So you have to vote as Malaysia voted. Remember when Malaysia voted in favor of the resolution? The Security Council revolution? For the use of force against Iraq, Saddam Hussein? Yeah. And all the Malaysian people, all, all, all were opposed. And Dr. Mahathir said, we couldn't do it otherwise. If we had not voted this way, they'll destroy our economy. Okay? And so, don't complain about whether the rate of interest is higher or lower. It is still haram. And the result will be the same. It just takes more time. They want to impoverish you, reduce you to poverty. And that's why there are demonstrations in New York now. And the American people are now surrounding Wall Street. Uh, this little booklet was written at the request of the Director General of the Prime Minister's Department of Economic Planning. Can't remember his name now. He attended a lecture of mine. He said, write this, but don't make it more than 50 pages. The gold dinar and the silver dirham. Islam and the future of money. And we're going to have it soon in Bahasa. This tells you, in a nutshell, the story of money and how they have used money to reach where they have reached today, where they have enslaved you. Now, before I, I go to my question, is the, the statement that I would like to make is that uh, uh, you're asking the wrong people for the solution. You're asking Ben Bernanke for the solution of the global economic problem. He is the one who's created it. So you're asking the bankers how to solve a problem, that's, that's wrong. They create a problem, you can't ask them how to solve it. <laughs> Correct? Okay, now, uh, the next thing is that, yes, we can live without the banks, because, uh, yeah, they've been around for the past three, 400 years. We've been living for many, many years before that. The solution is in the Muamala, get into real business, okay? And the solution is in the Quran. One of it is that, just pay them the principal and remove, don't pay them the interest. That's what they need to do actually to solve the economic problem. Okay? My question straightforward to Shay Imran Hussein, what are the role of the ulama? It's so baffling. Why are they being so silent, number one? Or why are they knowing the fact that they are wrong, they still endorse it? And why is that that we have to follow that particular group of ulamas who come out and say that yes, this is Islamic? Sharia That's compliant. Sharia compliant, mm. which who come from that particular part of the world, mm. because I find that uh, uh, there 